In the next few lessons, we will be looking at equations of lines, how to graph lines, and so before we start graphing lines, we need to understand our coordinate system. We have a rectangular coordinate system to help us map out certain relations. The coordinate grid has a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. The horizontal axis we label X, the vertical we label Y, although in science classes you could be labeling them something different like pressure and volume, maybe time and speed. So in algebra, X and Y, those are what we usually label the axes, but they can be labeled anything you want. The center where those intersect is called the origin, and the grid is divided into four quadrants. Traditionally, we use Roman numerals to label these four quadrants, and you go in a counterclockwise direction. So we have quadrant one, two, three, and four. Let's just start out with the basics on how to plot some ordered pairs. You're giving an ordered pair, meaning order matters. The first number is the X coordinate, and the second number is the Y coordinate. So we're going to go along the X side to side, then we're going to go up and down. So we're going to go over 1, so from the origin, we're going to go over 1, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's our point. We're going to label it A. Now, do you need to draw all that? No. Just need to show it on the computer of what I'm doing. Okay, this one says don't go side to side any, but only go up 2. So again, starting at the origin, going up to, that's letter B. Now what about some negatives? This says to go left, because I'm going to go negative, so left 3, and then up 5. So left 1, 2, 3, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be letter C. D, left 4 but don't go up or down any. So one, two, three, four, that's D. So when you have those zeros, you end up on an axis. All right, you just need to be careful which way you're going, up, down, left, right, and you're always going side to side first and then up and down. E, negative two, negative four. Gonna go left two and now down four that negative in the y direction. F, that says don't go side to side any, but go which direction? Down three. Now you're saying, ooh, how do I plot a fraction? Well, first of all, you need to know that negative five over two, two goes into five two times with one left over and it's still negative, that means you're going to go left two and halfway. All right, so you're going to go left two, one, two, and a half, and then I'm going to go up two, one, two. So you're in the middle of two squares. That's okay. Let me just erase this, and I'm going to label that as point G. So we're going to do the same thing with H. First of all, let's change three halves into what's called a mixed number. So two goes into three one time with one left over. So I'm going to go right four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to go up one and a half. Now what if those fractions were like two-thirds or one-third? You just kind of estimate that. I'm not going to get out a ruler. But you need to realize that life is not all in pretty numbers. Sometimes we do have fractions, and on our coordinate grid, we're just going to do the closest we can get. All right, what about going backwards? So we, gave, we were given the ordered pairs, and we were asked to graph them. Now, what if we want the ordered pairs to go along with those points? So let's start with A. We go, we start at the origin, and you go, how can I get to point A. What do I do from here to here? Well, did I go side to side any? 
No, but I went up. So I would have zero and I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What about B? All right, can you just go from here to there? No, not in a coordinate system. You've got to go right and left first and then up and down. So that means from the origin, I got to go to the right and then up. All right, so I'm going to go up over one, two, three. And then up one, two, three, four, five. C. All right, so I've got to go from the origin to that point. Origin to that point. So right and then down. How far right? One, two, three, four, five. And I'll go down two, so that's negative. Point D. Got to go from the origin to D. So just like A, I didn't go side to side any, but I go down, going down. So no side to side, but going down, how many? One, two, three, four. Don't forget to put your negative. Then our last one, again, origin to the letter. Right or left, going left, and then down. So how far left did I go? One, two, three, that's left, so that's negative, and then down one. You should have been able to do this pretty easily without me even explaining it, but I wanted to make sure everybody's on the same page and we're not going too fast. I said we were going to be looking at lines. Well, the first thing we need to know is that a line represents an infinite amount of points. Infinite it means you can't count them all. But we can see if certain points are on our line. So does the point negative one zero lie on the line? Well, let's plot negative one zero. So again, you start from the origin. Negative one means go left one, but then don't go up and down any. So that's the point negative one zero. Is that on the line? No. What about negative three one? Well, that means I'd go left one, two, three, and then I'd go up one. So left one, two, three, and up one. That looks like that was on the line. All right, what about zero negative one. So start at the origin, don't go side to side any, but go down one. Is that on the line? Yes. Last one, four negative three. So start at the origin, go right, one, two, three, four, and then negative three, one, two, three. Is that on the line? No. That's all there is to it. Do the points lie on the line? Now, instead of pictures, let's do some algebra. We want to know if these points are on the line. No, we're not going to graph them. We're just going to use algebra. So we're going to see if whether the ordered pair is a solution. That means, is the point on the line? Is the point on the line? Now, I know you might not know those are graphs of lines, but we will shortly. So how do we know if it's a solution? Well, this is x, this is y. So we're going to substitute in 11 for x, and we're going to substitute in 2 for y, and we're going to ask ourselves, does that equal to 5? Can you do that arithmetic in your head? I hope so. You have 11 minus 6, is that 5? Yes. So that means if we were to graph this line, this point would be on the line, which means it's a solution to the equation. Okay, so this is x, this is y. So we have 6 times 10 minus 13 times 4 minus 8, and we're asking ourselves, is that 0? Well, that's a little bit harder to do in my head, so I'm doing this is 60 minus 
52 minus 8. 60 minus 52 is positive 8. Minus 8, is that 0? Yes, it is. So that point is on the line. Hmm, this one's different. I don't see a Y over here. Well, then you just plug in the X, the 5 for the X, because that's all you have. Is that true? No. How could we have made it true? If I would have made that a negative 5, then that works? Yes, it does. This equation only has a Y, so we're going to only stick in the Y. Does negative 4 equal to negative 4? Yes, it does. And we're going to look at those special kinds of equations that only have an X, that only have a Y, versus the kinds that have X's and Y's. Again, the next few lessons pretty much all about lines. The next four problems are just really doing some more algebra solving. We're not just saying yes, no. We're going to make it yes. Will these be on the line? Yes, they will be because we're going to complete the ordered pair to make sure that these are solutions. So how do we do that? Well, we're given three questions. That means you're basically working out three problems. So you're going to plug in negative 8 for which letter? X. So we have 3 times negative 8 plus 8Y is equal to 24. So now we just need to solve for Y. All right, so we have negative 24 plus 8Y equals positive 24. What happens? I need to get the add the 24 to both sides so I can get the Y by itself. Divide by 8 and I'm going to get 6. So that means the ordered pair negative 8, 6 will be on that line. It's a solution. The next one, this says to put in 0, not in for X, but for Y. Now I like 0 because it's easy, because 8 times 0 is 0. So now I just have 3X equals 24, divide by 3, and I get 8. The last one, I might not have a lot of room. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm putting negative 3 in for what number? For what letter? I'm sorry. Y. So I have 3X plus 8 times negative 3 equals 24. 3X minus 24 equals 24. I'm going to add 24 to both sides and I'm going to get 48. And when I divide by 3, I'm going to squeeze it in here, I'm going to get 16. So I have three ordered pairs, negative 8, 6, 8, 0, 16 and negative 3. Those are three solutions to this equation or those are three points on that line. Let's do number 10. Okay, so we're going to plug in 2 for x. And do the math. And we get 20. Now why was that a little bit easier? I think it was easier because the y was by itself and that's what I needed to find. Well, over here on number 9, I had to move things around. Hmm, well that was easy. But now I need to put in negative 4 for y, so I may have to do some more work. So I have negative 4 equals 8x plus 4. I want to get the x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I'm going to divide by positive 8 because I want to get the x by itself, and I get negative 1. So not quite as easy as that first one. And then here, I want to plug in negative 3 for x. Ah, they gave me another easy one because I want to get y by itself, and it already is. So it's negative 24 plus 4. So that's negative 20. So again, I have these three ordered pairs that would be, those three points would be on that line because they are solutions to that line. Now these next two problems are so easy, 
they might be hard. So easy, they really, really are. Because they don't have x and a y, and they are telling you what x equals. This says x must be negative 7 and no other value. And yet, they're asking us right there, what does x have to be? You don't do any work. What does x have to be? Negative 7. Now here, this says, okay, x is negative 7, but what can y be? This says y can be anything you want it to be. So you can put any number you want right there. All right? 10, 2, 100, negative 5.364, doesn't matter as long as x is negative 7. What about this one? This says that y has to be 2. y has to be 2. y must be 2. So that means 2 and 2 and they already had the 2. Well that means right there they're asking for x. What can that be? That's right. x can be anything you want it to be. Any number your heart desires. Just fill it in. It can't be wrong. 